Sky, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. You're welcome. Um, we've talked about breathwork today. Yeah, sure. I um, would love, love, love. I've experienced it with you a couple of times. I love it. It's, um, I know that it like triggers trauma. Sometimes. Well, sometimes. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, <clears throat> obviously the breath is, well, that's all we are in the end. <clears throat> all we are is breath, right? Because when we're breathing, we breathe oxygen, yes, that feeds the physical body, but we're also breathing energy or like in yoga they call, you know, pranayama practices, pranayama and prana is energy mm -hmm. it's, and, and pranayama is the controlling of that energy. So through the breath we control the energy in the body, <coughs> or the energetic part of the body. So <coughs> when we're breathing, like obviously when we stop breathing we die, don't we? Mm -hmm. So, um, which also brings me to something that I, I always think about, like, you know, in our moderns, particularly in the health and wellness areas, people are always talking about what we need to eat and what we need to drink, you know, we're all like you know, this, that and the other, green smoothies and drinking more water or drinking kombucha or this, that and the other, but still not a lot of people talking about the quality of the breath. And look, we know that people, the body doesn't even starve until it's fasting for sometimes more than 25 or 40 days. The body can go without food easy for 40 days and without water for seven days, but really we, most of us can't go without two minutes without breath before we die. So really the quality of our breath is what sustains the body. And in breath work, there's many realms of it. I mean, we can we know that you know psychotherapists all sorts of people prescribe just calming down, breathing in the belly to sort of calm down. When you breathe in the chest, this just triggers the anxiety. <sighs> Or you're in breathing, in breathing, in, in, in. So always we're trying to sort of breathe into the belly and remain calm. So breath work can be anything from just being calm, being relaxed, all the way up to breathing very intensely and triggering yeah, traumatic experiences, and even further than that. So on the spectrum, there's like rebirthing, um, which can be done just in and out through the nose all the way up to holotropic breath work, which is in and out through the mouth in a more chaotic manner that people have used even, you know, to sort of um, get into altered states of mind. <clears throat> so what I learned and what I studied for two years was probably a little bit down from holotropic, so it was quite intense and breathing in and out through the mouth and for about an hour trying to breathe in, in this kind of... But it's a balance because sometimes it can trigger trauma that comes up for um, release, but also we want to be able to integrate these traumas because that's what makes us split off and can make us um, have uh, different parts of our personality that are unintegrated as a whole. So what we want to be able to do with the power of the breath is to connect and contact these areas of trauma that we want to then integrate and become whole and be with. So we've got to be careful not to become traumatised again and relive the trauma as a child, but to still remain as the adult and bring that part in, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, but it can, it, it can be really, really powerful. I mean, when we're breathing like that, you keep the body still. Any movement can discharge energy. So what we're trying to do is um, build energy in the body. So you build energy in the body with breath. And when you lay still, what happens is you'll get a lot of sensations. People will get tingling in the arms or tingling in the feet, or they will actually even start to experience pain. So when people experience pain or tightness or heaviness in a certain area, we ask them to use the mind and focus on that area and breathe, send the energy of the breath there, send the energy of the mind there, breathe into that and try and expand what's underneath. Because often when we um, are shaking things up, the, your consciousness doesn't want it to come up because we stored those things in our body, in the cell's body for a reason because we couldn't Get handle it. Safe. Yeah. yeah, we couldn't handle it for that point or, you know, we tantrumed as a child or we made anger wrong in our family because our parents were really angry and we thought, no, I never want to be like that. So when anger came up or we were punished for being angry or having a tantrum, put on the naughty chair, love was withdrawn, all these sorts of things. So we learned to say, oh, okay, I'm not going to express that. I'm going to... You see kids do that, don't they, when they're in the supermarket, they kind of get almost as if like, if I don't hold my breath and push it down, I'm just going to explode, yeah. and if I explode, I'm going to get in trouble. So they're kind of in this, and literally in that moment, that energy, that feeling is being 
pushed down and stored in the cells of the body. And after a while, the child doesn't have to regulate itself, doesn't have to go, <gasps> it just happens as a habit. Yeah. And I use that same analogy when we're looking at the subconscious mind, how we store emotions. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. In that moment, the, the body in the subconscious mind has realized this is the way that I deal with that on a physical level, but also on an emotional level. Spiritual yeah. level as well. Well, the energy of that, if we learn, okay, well, and, and look, no no one escapes this because we don't, the answer is not to just let kids tantrum and do whatever they want. They have to be trained to, you know, to behave in schools and this, that, and the other. But as adults, we have to have self inquiry and we have to be like, well, hang on. But we don't even know we do it. And this is the twist of the whole thing because it becomes so habitual that you don't think, no, I'm not angry. I don't get angry. But if you're a sensitive person, or if things are happening to you and you think people are getting angry at you, then this is an indication, oh, I might have some disowned anger, mm. and it's stored in my body, it's leaking out sideways. You know, if you're a parent or in a relationship, your partner or your children, particularly, if your children are getting very angry at you, it might be an indication that, you know, they are processing your disowned feelings. Mm. I mean, it can get very complex. But so what happens with the breathing is good, is you take responsibility. You're like breathing, 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 and then after a while, it gets so intense that a feeling's going to come there, and people might start crying, people might get angry, people might even go into, you know, some sort of anxiety. I mean, if you look, I don't know if you've ever had an anxiety attack, where you're actually breathing, and <laughs> people do that, and uh, I actually had one so severe that I ended up going to hospital because I thought I had a heart attack. Yeah. It's really yeah full on so yeah. and so people when they're having these anxiety attacks it's funny because we've all got a threshold of fear in the body like we've all got elements of fear um, and we've all got like a threshold of you know what we can handle and once it goes above that you know what's going to happen we're going to like something's going to happen so when that threshold gets breached a lot of the time the body you know the body's smarter than us right mm -hmm. it's much more intelligent than our intellect and when that goes over, it sort of goes, you know what, get out of the way, I'm, I'm going to move this energy out, I'm going to move this fear out of the body. And you're almost having what would be considered a spontaneous breathwork session. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the body starts going, <laughs> and as you're breathing like that, the energy is unlocked from the body and it starts to move and it's literally coming out on the energy of the breath. And as that's happening, the person feels that fear so they feel even more anxious mm -hmm. as they're breathing but the people feel like that they're anxious because they're breathing funny mm -hmm. but it's actually well, it, you, you feel like you can't catch your breath and you're going to die yeah they're, oh, yeah. and they've lost control yeah. or you know they don't know why am I breathing like this I don't know what's happening so what is actually happening is that the body's breathing funny because you're actually scared mm -hmm. like it's taken over control and so I'm just going to move this out because usually when you just, if you go through that, when we go to hospitals and you're breathing like they want to tranquilize you, mm -hmm. calm down, everyone wants to calm you down. Because people just can't be with someone that's like that. So everyone wants to calm you down. But often when we calm that down, that bit of fear, you're suppressing it, it just again. goes back down again. Yeah. Because we know that emotions are energy, right? Mm -hmm. They're emotion, they're energy in motion. So all feelings really need to be in motion. Like we just need to let them come up and go, oh God, I'm feeling a bit this now. Oh, I'm feeling a bit that. Not necessarily express them to people, but just really be with that feeling. But when we learn that we can't be with that feeling, we're not allowed to express it, it gets held down. And then we get triggered, don't we, in life. So walk into a room, all of a sudden the anxiety's up, social situations, all sorts of different things, because that stuck energy has a life of its own. And it wants to move. Like all of that energy wants to move. That's the nature of energy, it moves. It moves and moves, it's not stagnant. So when we keep it stagnant, we might be able to do that in our 20s, but of course once we start to get towards the, the middle the mid out, middle age crisis type of thing, all these energies, it's, it, they become too powerful and they're too hard for us to hold down. And that's when people find themselves getting into trouble with you know addictions and all these sorts of things because they're needing those vices to keep those feelings down. So when they get triggered and come up, they want to be released, they want to be out there in the open, but we kind of go, get back down, get back down. And I use that analogy in my treatment when people come for the first time is that often in life, in our busy Western society, we're all walking around just so full, you know, <clears throat> just with the lid on, we're just coping, you know, it's like, oh God, I need to get to yoga because I just need to calm down because I'm so stressed and I'm losing it with the kids and I can't do this and, you know, we're just keeping the lid on, you know, we've, we've discovered all these ways that we can manage ourselves, you know, we've gone into the psychotherapist, given us tools, 
you know, what do we do when we've got anxiety in a social situation? How do I manage this? How do I manage criticism? All these other things because we're just so sensitive because we're so full. It's like trigger, 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 trigger. And um, we're just managing ourselves. And sometimes, all well, my theory has been that, and I suppose what breathwork allows for us, if the facilitator allows it, it allows you to just take the lid off and just let it all be there. Let all the fears come out. Let all the anxiety come out. Let the grief come out. Let the anger come out. Let the rage come out. Like let it come out of your body, not at people, but in. It's almost like it's a vortex, you know. And you're offering it up. It's like I can't. Like my body can't hold this. My container is not big enough to hold all these feelings. So I'm just going to open it up, and and then you create space in your container. And you have then people say, oh, you know, using mindfulness. You know, watch what's happening so that you have space before you react. But there's no space in you when you're full. When you're so full, there's no space in you to have that mindfulness. If you can open yourself up and release a little bit, it's like you've got a longer fuse, you know, and in that longer fuse allows you that space. Like, oh, interesting, <clears throat> this is triggering me into fear. Or interesting, that person just criticised me and I feel like I want to kill them. You, know, you have that space rather than becoming that feeling and having it take over you. So I'm not saying that I think it's... Um, Look, I did two years of cathartic breathing, and I think that was probably a little bit too much, to be honest. But um, you know, I definitely have a good understanding of um, of how it can work and where it can take you. And uh, I think sometimes we need to have an inter integrating calming down breath. Sometimes, if we're really too full, we really need to take the lid off and let it all come out. Um, other times. You know, we can just work with it and surf the edge of where we're sort of going and understand what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. But always remembering it's energy. Mm -hmm. The breathing is energy, and you're charging the body up with energy. And it's got to once it gets to its capacity, it's got to happen in some way, either through emotional catharsis or moving the body. So maybe even like, you know, that's how you can start pushing the energy through. And in the end. When you open all the channels in the body, because the emotions are energy, they are what block our energetic body. So we've got a physical body, and we have an emotional body, and we have a mental body, and these are all there. So we have blocks in the mental body and the emotional body. So the breathing is what connects us, our physical body, with the other bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to treat the, all the bodies. There's actually seven bodies. You know, but they're all energetic, becoming more and more and more subtle. Mm -hmm. But it's the breath that cr that creates the bridge between the unconscious and conscious, or the spirit and the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we're doing that sort of breathing, eventually you can move through the emotions that have moved through, and the whole breathing process, whether it's an intense, you know, <clears throat> rebirthing style, it can just become a very energetic experience and a very expansive experience and you know, you can actually, like you did with your treatment with me, you saw divine geometry and things like that, which is just, a, it's just another dimension, it's a more subtle dimension than what we live in now, so you can use the breath to experience, you know, the very fabric of existence, and, um, you know, that's what the yogis are doing mm -hmm. with pranayama, but my experience has also been that if we just start with the subtle practices of pranayama, um, we're not subtle enough to really experience that you know um, I studied yoga and they'll say you know breathe in this and run it through these channels but you're just running it through the channels with your mind you're not actually feeling mm -hmm. the energy run through that channel in your body so I think with the breath work and like the style of yoga that I teach which is a little bit unconventional um, it's almost like you you've got to work your body out you got to work out through the blocks in the energetic body before you can kind of go in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes we just need to explode and clean everything out, and then from that point you can have more of an energetic experience of, of breathing, and maybe your more subtle pranayama practices will become a lot more powerful, and um, you'll experience more sensations rather than just doing the practice. And I think when people are doing these practices, they become quite bored because they're not having any sensation. Mm -hmm. Or their, um, you know, their emotions, the mental blocks, they're all still...
covering up the doors on the way in. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about what you experience in your body because when I came to your session, I, I came because I wanted to try you out, you know, to bring you on board as an expert. I heard about your session and I'm like, I need to try you <laughs> yeah. before you come on. And I'm in the midst of healing my thyroid at the moment and I, I don't want to be on medication for the rest of my life and I've done a lot of work on it recently. And what blew me away was I came away from your session and do you remember like I had all that burning, tingling in my ears and yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I had all of this anxiety coming out and all of this stuckness in my throat which obviously triggered my childhood stuff. Um, you know, my very early zero to seven trauma, what well, was actually younger than that, um, well, not, y not younger than zero, but you know what I mean, younger than seven. Um, well, could be younger than zero as well. Well, that's true. Um, but I had all of this anxiety and then I had all of this feeling around here and the amazing thing for me is I've had, I've been slightly deaf all of my, my life mm. and my hearing started coming back so not only have I started expressing myself more and you know I've still got more work to do on that because I still can't scream but mm. I'll get there um, but it's just amazing you know, I, I can speak to somebody in a different room now and I can hear them yeah. whereas before mm. I couldn't and I just came you with no expectations just to try and see what it was and amazing things things that I, I thought could never be healed you know when I was younger I had always um, had a hearing test every year and they said to me look if it gets any worse you'll have to have a hearing aid it never got worse mm. but it, you know it's really not that great either but it's amazing that was in one session with you yeah look it's it's amazing. the power of the breath what yeah. can I say it's not it's not me it's the power of the breathing um, like a lot of children, like I remember when I was a kid, like I used to do that, you know, when my parents were fighting and things like that because it's so traumatic to hear and I, you know, not to go into your past, but, you know, for whatever reason, it's traumatic to hear and the expression in your throat you experience. So when you started breathing, so you charge the body with the breath, you're breathing, 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 and of course, so when you're pumping the body full of prana, it wants to start pumping through the energy system and when it gets to a block, it builds up. So, say for you, it starts tingling around here, or maybe even in the extreme case, it can get really painful, it can get really hot, it can start burning because you've been breathing, you're blocked here, you're blocked in your throat chakra, blocked in your expression because as a child, you couldn't express, you had to be quiet and you were worried and scared that you might be punished or something would happen. So, any time that you maybe wanted to express or, you know, you, you, had, you weren't allowed yeah, to do yeah, that, so you had this inside. block and in inside expression if you start expressing of course you start feeling mm. so then as an adult you're like well I don't want to start expressing well you do you, you know you're like I want to start expressing and healing this but when you start yeah, doing exactly. it the feeling is like oh and it's this fight that happens inside because you're doing it because you want to express but when you start doing it, like the feelings are so intense yeah. that you had as a child and you know your consciousness is trying to protect you from those unconscious feelings and when you start trying to pierce through that with the breath then you know, this kind of happens. And that's why you need to be facilitated and you can't coach yourself through yeah, breathing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have stayed there. I mean, and, and I can say that you hold such a beautiful space. Like, mm, I was I was stuck in trauma. I was stuck like this and I couldn't move my body and, and I, I had triggered back into that child, you know, the, the six-month-old baby. And I still felt safe. I, just look, I was looking in your eyes because you were like, open your eyes, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes and I could see the space that you were holding. I felt completely safe to be able to go yeah. into that trauma and release some yeah, of some the stuff are, that's in well there. Well, that's what's important when people are triggered into you are in this, <gasps> where you couldn't make a noise, you know, those dreams where you think you want to scream and yeah. then you sort of make it, <gasps> and nothing comes out, you're in that. And you had your eyes closed, and that's why I made you open your eyes, because we've also got to remember that we're in the present moment and we're trying yeah, to heal it's this easy from to the go past. back into that. Yeah, you become what that. It was like, and, yeah. and then you become that, and the healing's not taking place in that point. Healing takes place when you're like, oh, that's right, I'm here with you, yeah. and this is happening, and I am okay. Like, I'm not, I'm just experiencing the fear or the feeling of being unsafe when I was a child, but I am okay, and I'm here, and I'm safe with you. So, this is okay. But if you kind of go into yourself, then. Um, you know, it's still a good experience sometimes because people don't realise, oh God, I didn't realise that that fear was inside that was of me. thing. I'm glad that it happened because I didn't know that I felt like that as a child. I thought mm -hmm. I was a bit older, yeah. but this was like a six month old and I was frozen in fear and I just couldn't move and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't do anything because I thought I was going to die. Mm. And I never knew that. I never had that experience. So, 
you know, we've spoken before about our subconscious mind only lets us know what we're ready to deal with. Yeah. But it's when it does, it's a, it's such a healing experience. It is, and look, and most of the things that happen to us, it's when they're the, your smallest. Because yeah. you can imagine when a baby is born, um, they're they're defenseless. Their energy is so defenseless. Everything like a crossword, um, you know, a, an anger from one parent to another. The child has got no defenses. As adults, we've got defenses, yeah. and because we create them through childhood from being that pain. So if they hear this, like, you know, aggression between parents or some sort of what's perceived craziness, and they feel unsafe, like they can't. That's how the defense gets built. But initially, they're just they're helpless and defenseless, and they they just ah oh, like all these you know these negative energies are just coming straight at them. And then, of course, over time, we learn to cover up the heart to block, to, you know, to defend so that we don't get hurt by these feelings. Um, but yeah, getting back to what you were saying about what actually happens when you're breathing, is that that's what happens. So where the block is, the breathing will accentuate that. Because if you didn't have those blocks, you would breathe and you would just have, it would just be a very pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. You would just feel energy streaming around your body, streaming around the energetic body. You might feel expanded, you know, past the physical boundaries of your body. But when we have those blocks when we breathe it goes up oh, it's I can't you can't get through here mm -hmm. and when you keep and at that point normally people want to retreat and stop breathing and go oh I can't oh, I'm getting a weird sensation and that's when we, you really want to encourage them to continue on and go into the feeling more and know that they're safe and it's just a, a block and let's explore what's in there and for you it was expression and when you found that expression that you were unable to express in childhood it was like you know, it sort of blows apart a little bit. You, you know, through those energetic blocks there, and it's like, oh, something's happened to my hearing. You it's know, something's thing, yeah. I can hear, and I haven't been able to do that. And um, you know, that I just noticed that straight away. But over the next couple of days, my flatmate was like, I'm talking to you from the from the kitchen, and you can hear. You know, I didn't even notice, yeah. but now I can. Yeah. Yeah, so more of that might help unblock that and then more awareness to those types of things. And that, look, I don't claim anything because, again, like everybody's path is their own and it's a path of self-inquiry and, and experience and investigation and on the so self. It's how much you put into it as well. Whenever I go yeah. to do something, I'm like, I want to get the most out of this. So if they come along and they're sort of really half-hearted, then you can't really expect a result. No, you know? and it's the, look, it's the, it's the power of... It's the Intention. power of the breathing, and it's the and it's what somebody wants to sort of um, go into, and how they. Well, I mean, it is me as a facilitator to hold that space, mm. but um, I can't remember. I lost what I was going to say. I didn't want to say, um, yeah, that I can't sort of claim anything, but it just happens like magic, you know, whatever whatever comes up comes up for them to integrate and experience, and. No, I totally lost my train of thought. Isn't there. It? Like even if if they come half-hearted and they get half an experience, it's something, you know. And that maybe well, that's what they're meant to. Maybe that's what they're meant to experience. Maybe they're meant to think, oh, I didn't get much, or feel that, oh, disappointment, or maybe you know, maybe mm. that's what they're meant to experience. Like everything's perfect in in well, the long scheme of things. Yeah, well, that's the investigation of the self. But that's what the breathing does. It gives you a real experience of yourself. Yeah. You know, and that's the most healing thing. It's like you get an experience of yourself, what you feel that this happened here. Because you could go to someone and go, oh, well, what's happening with your hearing? We'll do this test. But it's all very outside. It's like what someone's telling you from a test. But when you have an experience of the breathing, what mm -hmm. the sensations are that happen in your body, then it's really an experience of yourself. And there's not many modalities that really give you that. And um, when we talk about um, whether people get something out of it, Again, it comes back to the self-inquiry because some people, that's their defense, is to for it not to work. Mm. Oh, nothing works for me, or yeah. I can't believe that I feel disappointed. It's like, well, what's in that? People get juice from that. And someone else might be more like, <clears throat> like I'm like that, kind of like, right, if I'm here, this is what I'm here to do, and I'm going to breathe. If you tell me to breathe, I'm going to breathe like a freight train. But that can also be a defense because, mm -hmm. you know, then you over breathe and you just say, yeah. like, I'm not going to feel anything because I'm just... <sighs> You know, you're sort of breathing in a mantra kind of way. Again, mm -hmm. you're escaping your feelings. So it's, yeah. as a facilitator, we've got to watch that and think, oh, this person is not breathing enough because they're depleted or they're more in a depressive kind of a state and they want me to really, 
give them a lot and really coach them and tell them that they're doing a great job to get there or someone's going to be like a good girl and they're winning the race, you yeah. know, like me. Um, and you've got to try and bring those people down back a little bit mm. to just sort of be in that bit, the uncomfortable bit. I think I think people have to experience, you know, expect to feel uncomfortable. You know, when I were breathing, I had this thing around my mouth. I don't know how I was holding my mouth, yeah. but it, it felt it was all contorted, <laughs> all and I was that. breathing through it, and it was just like bizarre. It's like just expect anything to happen. Well, and that's the beauty of the breath as well. It gives people that experience. People are like, I don't know what's happening. That can make people feel really scared if they their mouth starts they just doing something. Laugh because they're like, What's going on? I'm not in control. What's going on? Or their hands can start to do yeah. this because that, when breathing, they call it tetany. But if it's too much oxygen in the body, or too much CO2, or you know, if it's just an energetic experience, that some breath workers would say that when you get that, it's a contraction in the body. So people get cramps, often people get cramps in my treatments and I don't listen to them because I know that a cramp is when the body is not wanting to let go mm -hmm. of something that's been stirred up. Yeah. So they're like, oh, this has been stirred up in the leg and then all of a sudden the leg goes, oh, no, not letting go of that, I don't yeah. want to let go of that. So I suppose a regular massage therapist would probably go, oh my God, they've got a cramp, let's try and stretch it out. And I'd say, nah! <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> oh really? I'll help you with that. <laughs> And then sometimes when they get through that, they maybe have a little bit of like emotional yeah. release. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it's just interesting for people and people that's that people get an experience of their body. And people, what is that in my hands? So that's your energy. When you breathe, that's the energy in your hand. And because we are in our Western society, like if you go to the Eastern cultures, they are a lot more connected to spirit. You know, they're always praying and. Um, uh, they seem to be more connected to the subtle energy and more sensitive to subtle energy. And a lot, like the general collective in the Western society, we're not, we're very, our energy is very dense and very sort of gross. And for us to experience energy in the body, sometimes it needs to be a very gross experience of that. Mm -hmm. Like I know in my process from the very beginning, I have had that. And even then learning to run energy through my body initially, I used to be like, feel like I was like a, you know, a three-phase power, like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow! Um, and now that doesn't happen, and it's funny because you get addicted to that as well, like I miss that real charge, but obviously my energy is becoming more refined mm -hmm. and more subtle in my body, so, but I think in the beginning, it's people, you need to do something almost a little bit extreme, a little bit intense to feel like, oh yeah, right, okay, I am energy, mm -hmm. and when I breathe, this happens, and this intense experience I had and that was wild and then you know it can also intrigue you to you know go more into that yeah and experience your own energy in a gross form and eventually in a more subtle form. So if anyone wants to come find you um, what sort of people can you help? Like, it, um, Well I think that everybody should experience I think that anybody and anybody should experience um, themselves, mm -hmm. of course, 